Hey guys, it's Sean here from Microbudget Film Lab, and uh, I want to do a couple things this week. Uh, actually, I may do three videos this week because there's a few things I want to cover, um, including uh, some people have asked me to provide a video explanation of the One Room Wonders to kind of back up the reading material that's there. So I'm going to talk a bit about that in a separate video. But in this video, I want to do a case study, actually, of a, a One Room Wonder that I saw last night that's on Netflix, um, so I recommend watching it. It's called uh, The Platform, or in Spanish, La Plataforma. Um, so you can see it there, you should be able to see it there, and it's, um, it's quite a good movie in some ways. Uh, fun to watch, pretty, pretty gross. It's a sci-fi thriller, sci-fi horror maybe, and uh, it's really useful to search these One Room Wonders out if you're gonna make a One Room Wonder because it can give you some really good guidelines about how people use the spaces they're in, really good examples, um, and can really enrich your own writing. We're not you know, making these things from scratch. We're not constructing story from scratch. There are all kinds of examples to draw, draw from, and they're entertaining. So it's useful for you as an artist and as a filmmaker to take advantage of that. So La Plataforma, the basic idea, and I won't try to, I'll try not to give too many spoilers here, but there will need to be some, so maybe you want to watch the movie first before you uh, listen to this video and then we can kind of work through it together and you can make some notes and stuff. Um, but it's, uh, as I say, it's a sci-fi, it's set in one location, it's in terms of one room wonder types, it's a puzzle to solve. Basically they're in a space, or the, the lead character, Goring, is in a space uh, that he needs to get out of, that's a mysterious space, it's some kind of prison, uh, and every day at the same time a plate of table comes down. They're in kind of a, what they call the hole, la olla. And uh, there's a, a dining room table that lowers through a hole in the floor to each level. And there's, you know, potentially hundreds of levels. They don't know, he looks up and it goes all the way up. He looks down and goes all the way down. And, and uh, he, everybody, every person, every cell is two people in it. And at the top of the building is the, you know, level number zero and level number one. Level number zero is the kitchen where they cook all this magnificent food and then it goes to level one and the people at level one eat it and then uh, they have about five minutes or so to stuff as much food into their mouth as possible and it goes to level two and they eat the leftovers level three. So you can imagine by the time it gets to the lower levels and they go on, you know, to beyond 200 levels, you can imagine there's nothing left and it gets more and more disgusting because they can't keep any food. If they keep any food, the temperature in the room rises or it falls until it becomes unbearable and they have to throw away the food. So they're not allowed to keep anything, they just have to consume. So it's also, it's kind of a, an allegory for society, from, for a, a certain perspective on society and consumerism and the, the struggle to get to the top. And uh, people end up on levels and then they move uh, between levels, they end up in different levels for no apparent reason. Sometimes you're on level six and then, you know, a month later, you move down to level 48 and then back up to uh, 12 and then down to 180. And the lower you get, the less food you get and the more disgusting it gets and the more vicious and savage um, the prisoners become in those settings as time passes and they're forced to do unthinkable things in order to survive the period of time that they're held in that level before they move up and down. So the, the stakes are pretty clear, you know. Uh, one thing I talk about with One Room Wonders is you need to have clear conflict, clear stakes, clear character arc, a clear story arc with rising action. Uh, you need to have a clear goal, did I say that already? And um, that sort of thing. So the, the stakes are pretty clear, which is to survive, because it's not clear you're gonna survive the torment of this place. And you need to get out, to figure out how to get out of this cell. In many ways, it's similar to the movie, the Canadian movie, from back in the 90s that's actually in the, the booklet, One Room Wonders book booklet called Cube. Uh, and it's sort of clever. They take one space. There's a little bit that goes out of it. There's some st uh, shots, um, almost like B-roll. It's in a kitchen. And uh, when the guy, the main character, Goreng, is being admitted into the prison, we never know why he's in the prison, though. I think the clue to it is in uh, something I'll talk about in a second. But it's basically could be shot in an underground garage. It's what it looks like is an underground garage and it's sort of the intake interview that he's having with uh, the woman in charge or one of the administrators. And then there's a scene at the end that's like a nondescript black space that could be shot 
anywhere and then just fiddled a bit with a little bit of visual effects to make it feel more vast using lighting effects and so on. But uh, it's not. Uh, but other than that, uh, it's literally just one room. And like Cube, where cleverly they basically, you know, they enter from the right and then they leave through the left and then you see them climbing in through the, from the right again. So it's the same room, but they're just, you know, the trick of montage, right? They just shoot them leaving and then shoot them coming in. And so you believe in your head, you trick yourself into believing that it's two separate rooms. Same thing. We believe that they're in different rooms because of the platforms and they can look down and see, but you only ever see it, the people below or people above kind of from where they are and then the lowering of the table. So it's literally one room that they're just shooting in a way to make it feel like above or below. And then they're using a little bit of visual effect to give the sense, you know, kind of like a mirror held up to a mirror where there's kind of an infinite regress because the light keeps bouncing back and forth. That kind of effect in terms of seeing the levels going up and the levels going down. So it's very much in the mode of, of cube. And so the, the conflict, there's a, you know, there's the external conflict I've talked about and the internal conflict and the external conflict is, you know, uh, the need to get out, need to survive in the first instance, and then to get out of this, this prison. So it's either survive long enough until you're released from the prison which uh, it becomes apparent is an impossibility, or you need to find a way to escape from the prison. Is there some way out of the prison uh, itself uh, separate from waiting until your, your term, term is up? And so that structures the action of what's going on. And in terms of you know, the rising action, which I've talked about is every uh, struggle, every obstacle becomes more difficult than the last obstacle. You see that take place. I mean, the first obstacle is the guy, first of all, okay, he, he arrives, he doesn't want to eat the food. He's got to get over his queasiness about eating food that other people have eaten. People dance on the table and people are going bonkers, right? And so they they walk on the table to get to, you know, there'll be a beautiful cake in the middle of the table. So they'll just like stand on the table to get to the cake. They just grab it because they only have five minutes. So he has to go get over his queasiness to eat. Otherwise he's going to die. And, um, then he's sent to a much lower level where there is no food and so he has to survive in that level and so the stakes immediately go up there and then he's taken interestingly to a higher level he goes from level 48 i believe where there's still the food is kind of disgusting and the table is sort of all broken up but there's still food and a substantial amount of food and sometimes even wine by the time uh, then he's moved to level 173 i believe by that point there's no food. The table is like picked clean. It's just like broken goblets and glasses and uh, plates and that sort of thing. And so he's got to survive and he faces a choice of whether to engage because he's still in the same prison cell with the same guy. You move between levels with the same person for as long as they survive and then you're paired up with somebody else. And uh, then he's got to decide whether he's going to um, engage in cannibalism. Uh, and then he's moved up, which is a pretty high stake. You know, are you going to eat your cellmate? And then he's moved up to level six, where suddenly the food is glorious and the table is hardly, you know, messed up at all. And uh, I don't know if it's level six or level eight. I don't know, he moves, he moves up uh, to one level and then back down again to another even deeper level to 202, I believe. And uh, yeah, it's level 12, I think. Anyway, so he meets a woman there and she's got a dog and uh, he faces a different struggle there. The struggles at the higher levels tend to be more kind of emotional struggles. You know, level, level 48, the first one where there's still food. And uh, as I say, he's struggling with his disgust at the food. The next level up, he's struggling with um, a more existential um, uh, issue, but at a higher level than just like this food grosses me out. Now it's about what is my relationship to fellow humans? Because he starts, it's, it's, really, it's tied in very tightly to his character arc. His character arc really is, he starts off kind of arrogant and believing in the fundamental goodness of human beings and the possibility through intellect. He brings with him a book. He brings with him Cervantes, um, uh, you know, not the man from La Mancha, which is the uh, Don Quixote. And uh, he's reading Don Quixote and his cellmate, his first cellmate, has a knife and another cellmate has a dog and a third cellmate has a rope and another cellmate has a, or another prisoner has a samurai sword. So they all are allowed to bring in one item with them and he chooses a book because he's intellectual. And in the end, he has to overcome his over-intellectualizing of things. So at first he intellectualizes 
the possibilities of people working together to alleviate their conditions, then he becomes cynical about that, again at an intellectual level. And then he begins to uh, move towards a sort of more emotional, spiritual understanding of his space and how to overcome his space. What is the way out of his space? Is it kind of a spiritual, um, almost Christian, well, very Christian, actually there's a lot of Christian symbology in there, um, conception of how to do so. So it's this interesting thing where the lower levels are physical, it's physical rising action from, you know, uh, you know facing with cannibalism and then uh, going to be eaten and then faced with cannibalism, going to have to eat his, uh, his cellmate and, and so on. And at the upper levels, it's this kind of intellectual, spiritual rising action where he faces increasing difficulties and is forced to change based on that. So you can see that rising action, that clear goals, the clear character arc, even though it's kind of an existential character arc and a spiritual character arc, it's nonetheless clear in terms of, in terms of his journey. Uh, and then the ending is, is ambiguous and that's okay. Actually, you can have an ambiguous ending. You know, I've talked about it. If your statement, you need to have a clear thematic statement. In this case, it, it's, I think the thematic statement is that the only freedom comes through self-sacrifice and, um, in the end, that self-sacrifice, it's not clear whether that leads him to escape or to die or whatever. It's, it's, a, it's a kind of open nebulous ending, but it's nonetheless, uh, it's a, kind of a satisfying ending. You sort of scratch your head a little bit, but you're like, oh, okay. Uh, it, it, it's, uh, it's been earned, that, that idea has been earned. So that's really all I want to say about it. I'm sorry about the spoilers, as I said, I warned you. At the beginning there would be spoilers so i hope that you still watch the movie or that you watch the movie before you went through this entire video as i say it's really worth it these kinds of these kinds of movies are can be more difficult to make because it's obviously more expensive like you see even though the setting is just literally one room um, more or less nonetheless the effects you know there's you know violence and uh, some fight scenes and stuff are a little bit uh, on the higher budget side but it can begin to give you a sense if that's the kind of thing that interests you being trapped in a space and unable to, to leave it. That is, uh, you know, you can begin to get some ideas about how you might do that yourself with, with a more limited budget and a more limited space, whether it's your house, your garage, or a barn, whatever, whatever it happens to be, wherever you're trapped in this moment in the quarantine. So I'm going to leave it at that. And then uh, I'll do another video that's more generally about the different categories of uh, One Room Wonders that you can go through uh, in conjunction with the book. Um, I'll say a lot of the same things that are in the book, but, uh, you know, maybe add in some other insights or whatever. Uh, you know, as I said, this one is a puzzle to solve, which includes Cube. It includes the movie Moon, which is a wonderful movie uh, with Sam Rockwell. Uh, it includes, um, what's another one of those movies? Uh, exam and the one I love which is a comedy actually which is a nice use of, of a single location for the purposes of uh, having some fun that's not simply darkness so I uh, suggest you see that is Mark Duplass and Elizabeth Moss um, who is a wonderful actress and he's a wonderful actor so check those out and I'll leave it there now and add your thoughts below the video did you like the movie did you not like the movie what did you see that maybe I didn't see about the kind of journey and kind of stakes and conflict and so on that was in in that movie. So until then, good luck with your projects and I can't wait to hear how they're going. Bye for now.